الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله continue on with our study كتاب في الإيمان the book in إيمان by إمام أبو عبيد القاسم بن سلام رحمة الله عليه رحمة واسعة and Again, before we get into the treaties, I thought it was it would be very useful for us, especially for those who don't who aren't familiar with some of the texts of the Salaf, and especially those who are not familiar with some of the early sects in Islam, that we have an idea about the context, so that we we uh, gain a, a tiny bit of uh, history about how the uh, innovations in certain aspects of creed came about and it will give us some insight into how some of the groups, the contemporary groups like the Asha'ira and meaning the Ashiris and the Diobandis as we've been talking about recently and some other sects and really in fact a lot of the Sufi sects that really they have begun to codify their understanding of creed, of Aqidah in the with some of how how some of these classical if you will classical mubtadi'in those classical innovators uh codified their creed meaning that they accept, they take some of those same premises and they are an evolution they evolved their sects actually evolved and a lot of the contemporary groups are just a a contemporary modifying form of some of these original sects and groups and this is why you find some of the athar of the Salaf like Imam Babahari he mentions that be careful of the one uh, be careful of small innovations because they they grow basically they grow and they turn out to be big innovations what was something small seemed like in the religion in the past 1000 years ago 1200 years ago 1300 years ago becomes uh, it, it grows generation after generation then we even see how shirk evolved you know from a, a, a people who began to just make sur uh, pictures of their uh, righteous people and they didn't worship them at that time but they just wanted to honor them then the next generation after they died the next generation began to to go a step further and venerate them. And the next generation began to just outwardly totally worship them as gods. And this is how innovation and how kofr even, uh, it evolves. So it's a very serious thing. And this is why you see that Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah is haris on, on adhering to these principles. And the contemporary people don't understand this. They don't understand why are Salafis so vigilant about refuting Ahl Bidah. Why don't you leave Hamza Yusuf alone? Why don't you leave Nu'man Ali Khan alone? And I'm sorry to mention names and I didn't really want to, but sometimes it just comes out. And other people, why don't you leave those guys alone? They're doing so much good. So many people are guided in this way. Jamaat al-Tablik, so many people have begun to pray again. It's because of the danger that lies within many aspects of either their aqidah or their methodology and da'wah which goes against kitab Allah wa sunnah to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa fahim salaf as and this uh this deviation is where it becomes a trap and it's hard to break free when you love someone so much and you see things that you khalif a shar that go against the shar and sometimes even shirkiyat or other forms of Bid'a Mukaffara or Bid'a Ghayra Mukaffara. Let's get back on track. So, Ahabat Fillah, going back to the Imam, to set the context, we're going to look quickly, as quickly as possible, at some of these sects, uh, the early sects in Islam, for example, the Jahmiya. So, here on this chart here, we have the Jahmiya here, then we have the Ma'tazila, and then we have the Kulabiya. And we have the Asha'ira here. And although our text is about Iman, we're just going to get, you know, just a little tasawr, a, 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 a little bit of uh, 
uh, uh, an impression or a picture of one of these groups, these mutakallimun, these groups of the Ahl kalam Because you'll hear if you uh, mix with the Ashadis and stuff like this, you'll hear them talking about Ahl kalam uh, kalam is so good in studying philosophy. And you look at the Diobandi's curriculum. They want you to study philosophy. Azhar. They want you to study philosophy and things like this. In order, and then this is supposed to strengthen your Islam. How does philosophy and those things which are external to Islam, how do they fortify the Muslim and make him a better Muslim? Yes, they can teach you to what not to believe and what to rud, but they are incorporating that in their uh, beliefs. And this is where Ahl Kalam, a lot of their their beliefs came from. So the Jahmiyyah, uh, to be a little bit more concise, because there's so much to say. The Jahmiya, as far as we're just going to look at three categories here. We're talking about the issue of Iman. Where do these groups stand with Iman? Where do these groups stand with Al-Asma'i wa Sifat? The attributes, divine names and attributes of Allah. And where do they stand with regards to the Qadr, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And uh, all of these things, this has to do with Iman. And the pillars of Iman. Because what are the pillars of Iman? According to the Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu salam, he... Uh, when uh, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and what is Iman? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, In tu'minu billahi wa malaykati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa niyomil akhir wa tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. It is to believe in Allah. And that's where our asma wa sifat, the divine names and attributes, because that's a part of believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tu'minu billahi wa malaykati and the, and the angels. That's umur al ghaybiyya wa malaykat wa kutubihi and his books. وَرَسُولِهِ and his messengers عَلَيْهِمْ after salatu wasalam وَرَسُولِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ in the day of judgment we didn't talk about the day of judgment here but I thought it was a little bit out of our scope because we're not we just want to get a, a, an, a, an idea about these groups and uh, and believing in the divine decree the good and the bad of it and that's why Qadr is the thir third point I want to talk about with regards to these groups okay the Jahmiya so the Jahmiya were one of the first. They preceded these other groups, okay? And they, uh, the Ahlus Sunnah, at the time, the Salaf, had ha pretty much made ijma, uh, uh, consensus about takfir of them, that they are disbelievers. And you're going to see why. First, for them, the meaning of Iman was ma'rufat qalbiya. It was just knowing uh, uh, Allah in the heart. Okay, it, it, it's just no one is having just that you, you have an acknowledgement. Yes, there's a God. Yes, Allah exists. That that's basically their iman in a, in a nutshell. And we're going to talk about that more in the next daughters or the next sitting uh, a little bit about s some more details about them. But we just want to get a, again a tasawwur. So they believe that iman is just simply in the qalb, in the heart. And, and, and in fact, it's just an acknowledgement that Allah exists, similar to the shaitan. In fact, the shaitan had more iman and a better understanding of iman than the Jahmiya and Fir'aun. And according to their belief, we'll talk about the implications of that later. As far as Asma'i wa Sifat, the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they negated, the Jahmiya negated the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means, if you say, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, they say, no, no, Ar-Rahman, la. There's, you know, because that's making, uh, you know, Rahma, mercy, is an attribute of creation. You know, mothers are merciful to their children. Fathers are merciful, hopefully, to their children and to, and to others. And we're merciful to creation. These are attributes of the creation. So, no, we don't say Allah has mercy. This is what they, they, they negate the sifat, the characteristic of it. And they negate the name, even. Because... They are fleeing from those people who made resemblance between Allah and His creation. So they negate names and attributes. As far as Qadr, the divine decree, they also negated Elm. So they were, you know, some of the beginning of the Qadriya sect, of, the, of those who negated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew everything, knows everything, knew knew everything that happened in the past, knows everything in the future, knows what's happening now, and knows what could have been. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. He created us. They negate that Allah has ilm, that he has knowledge of these things. So this, you can see,
from their negation of names and attributes of Allah and and knowledge that that Allah says this is so so this belief is filled with a lot of kufr of disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so for this reason the salaf they may take fear of them they also have other ish other beliefs uh you know like they believed in the creation of the Quran the Quran was created many many other uh beliefs and reasons why the salaf may take fear of them but we we want to keep it simple simple because we're really concerned about Iman because that's what Imam uh, Abu Ubaid uh, Al Qasim bin Salam his treaty was about is about Iman. But Ma'tazila the second sect I want to talk about you know which was and some of these sects they evolve some from others and as a reaction to others and something I've mentioned in the past and I want us to drive this home is always remember this and. Uh, it's very important because it gives you an understanding and it gives you some fiqh fideen, in fact. Because what we see is a lot of people don't understand that bid'ah has different levels and Ahl Sunnah has different levels. And from that, then they take everything as the same. They say, oh, this person did the smallest bid'ah. They're a mubtidi'ah. They're a caller to bid'ah. I'm going to make hajr from them. I'm going to do... So you don't treat everyone the same. You don't treat everyone the same. And there's this comes under fiqh mukhalif. This comes under the understanding of how to, to interact uh, how to deal with the those people who differ with the truth not a, a difference between you and that's another whole another issue we don't want to open that up in the study of this treatise so the point being the Ma'tazila they uh, are less than the Jahmiyyah you know as far as I don't know uh, of the, the scholars making takfir of them uh, you know, unless they're khalis and, and, and so forth. But as far as the issues of the, uh, they believe iman, faith, is, 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 is the heart, the tongue, and the juare. So they basically, the Mu'tazila, have the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah with regards to iman. And that's why I wanted to emphasize, like we said, uh, Ahl Bidah to follow it. Because some of them, they have muafaka. They agree with Ahl Sunnah on some things. They agree with Ahl Sunnah on some things. And it just depends on their bud, their, 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 their distance from the creed of Ahl Sunnah in how we deal with them and how they, uh, you know, for example, someone who's a Jahmi, a Khalis, this person's a disbeliever. So we don't even treat them, you know, as we, we treat, uh, you know, the other Ahkam of Ahl Islam, basically. Mu'tazila, okay, this guy, that means his, he, he believes the same as we, you and I do in Iman. The Aqeed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Right. So, the diff, you're going to deal with them differently. Anafi as-sifat. They negate, the Mu'tazila, they negate the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They negate the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But, however, they make ithbat. They affirm, they affirm, they affirm his, uh, the name. So they say, that means, they say the divine names of Allah subhanahu wa So that means, for example, in the example we mentioned before, Ar-Rahman. Okay? So they say, yeah. Allah is Ar-Rahman. That's one of his names. Without the Rahma, without the mercy. Because they're afraid to say that you know, mercy, which is a characteristic we see in the creation, they're afraid of making a similitude. But rather, Ahl Sunnah, we say, Nam, the creation has mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy, but his mercy is unlike his creation. Uh, we also say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, that there is nothing like him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al -Kareem, al -Basir. and he is all hearing and all seen. Right. So they uh, negate the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as far as Qadr, the divine decree, they negate the Shafa'a because they have their particular pillars of Islam. And again, this is kind of outside of our scope. We're not going to talk about that in depth. But they negate Shafa'a. They're known as the uh, Wa'idiyya, like, like the Khawarij as well. So they, they negate as far as the Qadr, that means they believe someone who dies 
uh, on uh, someone, they believe that the that a person is Baina Manzilatain. That the Ahla uh, Kaba'ir, the people who do the major sins, that they're not. So, someone who drinks wine, they fornicate. Fine. For the Ma'tazila, they say, well, that person is not a believer. And likewise, they're not a disbeliever. But they came up with a new category that is not, that's not known in the Shara. And they say they're Baina Manzilatain. They're between that and that. But they do believe that they'll be in the hellfire forever. Okay? So they negate the Shafa. They don't believe there'll be an intercession from, uh, and that Allah will forgive those who do major sins if He so wills. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, In Allah, Allah yaghfiru an yushrika bi wa yaghfiru ma'duna thalik li man yashah. Verily, Allah forgives. Uh, does not forgive those who commit shirk with him, but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. Like Jimmy. Kulabiyah. Also, uh, when we talk about the Asha'ira, Imam Abu Hassan al-Ashari, Rahmatullahi Rahmatul Wasiya, that he went through various stages because he studied with a Mu'tazili scholar. And so he spent a lot of years on this creed. Then I believe he went to, he morphed into Kulabiyah. And some of their issues. And then in the end of his life, he came back to Ahl Sunnah and he refuted extensively in some of his books uh, Ahl Bid'ah and these other uh, sects. Anyhow, Kulabiya, which really no longer exists, but there are some characteristics of their creed that you find in, in certain groups and individuals. They believe that Iman, faith, is a qawla lisan, is a statement of the tongue, and it's an issue in the heart. So they don't believe in amal. So they have irja. They have they are uh, murjia in their uh, iman, in which they take away iman. Iman. I mean, uh, amal or deeds are not a part of iman. As far as the asma wa sifat, the divine names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, they affirm the names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, His divine names, Subhanahu wa Taala, but they negate some. Some of his sifat. So they don't, so they're closer to Ahl Sunnah in this, in the Bab of Al Asma'i wa Sifat. Okay? They affirm all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and they negate some of his, his uh, sifat, some of his divine characteristics. As far as the Qadr, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they believe the same as Ahl Sunnah. In the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything was written. Allah has knowledge, full knowledge of everything in the other Muratib, Muratib al Qadr. Fine. Then we get to the Asha'ira, which we deal with cont in contemporary times. Uh, many of the Muslims and many uh, of the schools of thought around the world, they are coming from Ashari Creed. And what they believe about Iman is they believe Iman is Tasdiq, you know, so it's, it's like belief in the heart. Uh, tasdiq bi Qalb. So they have, uh, they have irja as well, because they don't believe that amal, that deeds, are a part of that. And these are some of the most Im, uh, famous uh, ashari, like Bakalani and, and others, and that they have this, this, uh, this uh, creed, this aqidah. And also another point I want to mention is that these various groups, that they also split. So you have various sects, especially Ashari's and other Greeks. They're not just one particular view, but you had other, certain Imams of them that had certain beliefs and, and people followed them like a school of thought as far as Aqidah. And this is how you see it splits. If tarakat al-Yahud alayhta wa sabayin firqa, if tarakat al-Nazara alayhta wa sabayin wa sabayin firqa, wa sata taraku hadhi umala talatha wa sabayin firqa, kula fin nalir wahida. You know, the Jews broken in 71 sects, Christians 72 sects. My Ummah, meaning Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Ummah, the Muslims will break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. So you see, the, the, they, they were split, they were split. People would start halakat groups, and then they f might innovate in the deen, and their students would innovate and codify that aspect of creed. So you can see how it splits and how these sects split. But back to the Asha'ira, uh, as far as divine names and attributes, this is one of the biggest issues we have with uh, Ashadis 
is that they negate some of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They negate some of the sifat also in issues of Iman, as we said. But perhaps there are some Ashadis that believe in Iman similar to Ahl Sunnah. It just depends, you know. So there's a morphosis, a morphing of the, the, the creed and a morphing of the bid'ah a lot of times. So they negate some of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as far as the, the, the Qadr, they, have the, they believe in the Qadr uh, similar to Ahl Sunnah Tiwil Jama'ah or like Ahl Sunnah. They have the same belief. So I think what we can gain from this before we get into the treaties is understanding that Ahl Bid'ah has different levels. And Ahl Sunnah has different levels in accordance with their knowledge. You know, our knowledge is not like our scholars and not like the students of knowledge or strong students of knowledge. We're just simple people. And maybe some of us are beginning students of knowledge or whatever the case may be. You know, people are on different levels in their knowledge. And so it's very important to realize, you know, Ahl Sunnah has different levels in accordance with their practice and their, and their, their Iman and their, their strength and knowledge especially. And Ahl Bidah, likewise, they have different levels and different, um, uh, and some are closer to the Sunnah than others. You know, we can talk about the Khawarij, for example, who make takfir to the people for the major sins. The original Khawarij is, is pretty different in some traits from the uh, latter-day Khawarij, meaning of this time, of contemporary times. Contemporary times, we'd say groups like Al-Shabaab, Boko Haram, ISIL or ISIS or Daesh, and other groups, they, they have many things in their belief, which is like Ahl Sunnah. But it's the issue of takfir and the issue of their understanding of jihad and and, 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 and and causing facade around the earth, those issues where they differ with Ahl Sunnah and where they go far astray and it has other implications, you know, and making takfir of people for not joining them and all this. These are attack, um, aspects of the original Khawarij creed. But in other things, as far as Iman and as far as divine names and attributes, generally they agree with Ahl Sunnah. And they also have difference between each individual or each jama'ah. So anyway, those are some of the things that we want to get a, get a background about before we get into the book of Al-Iman by Imam Abu Ubaid Al-Qasim As-Salam Rahmatullahi Alayhi Rahmatin Wasi'ah and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said was correct. Anything I said that was incorrect for myself. The Shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.